Good morning, Prime Minister. Kate McKenna from CBC. Members of your caucus have been calling for major changes, including potentially a cabinet shuffle uh, or, or that you show some contrition uh, since the Toronto St. Paul's by election loss. Why have no changes been made and, and will any changes be made? We spent the summer uh, out there talking with Canadians, talking with uh, caucus members talking with the team about what Canadians are focused on, what Canadians really need, and Canadians need support. Canadians need investments that are going to secure their jobs, their families. Canadians need investments uh, that are going to deliver programs, whether it's school foods, whether it's uh, more places at $10 a day in childcare, uh, whether it's uh, protection of manufacturing jobs that we've been investing in over the years. That's what Canadians are focused on, and that's what we're delivering right now. Um, yes, there's, as you've seen, adjustments to certain programs. Uh, there's responsiveness to realities of uh, the Canadian economy and help directly for Canadians, and we're going to stay focused on them. Good morning, Prime Minister Marika Walsh with the Globe and Mail. Um, you say that you plan to stay on despite persistently bad polling, despite the by-election loss in Toronto that your party lost for the first time in three decades because you want to continue to deliver. Isn't that what Joe Biden insisted on? Listen, we are focused on being there for Canadians. We are focused on stepping up on support and investments that are going to leave Canadians better off for the coming years and indeed decades. Canada has built one of the strongest economies in the G7, in the world right now, because we've been there to invest in the middle class and people working hard to join it. We've been delivering on programs that have made a real difference in Canadians' lives. And right now, as people are facing challenges, we are setting the best balance sheet in the G7 to work for Canadians with $10 a day childcare spaces that allow uh, people, families to go back to work, that allow people confidence that their kids are going to be well supported on their way uh, into uh, years of schooling. School food programs, dental programs that make a real difference in the daily lives of Canadians. These are things that actually meet the needs of the, 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 the challenges Canadians are facing right now. And that's what we're focused on delivering right now and into the coming years. But sir, you just made the Joe Biden argument that his record justifies him staying. The electorate is saying they don't want you. They want change. Your polling personally is worse than your party's. I spent the summer talking with Canadians and people's focus is on getting the support they need for their kids, for their future. They want to see a strong future for Canadians. They want to see opportunities for their kids. That's what we're working on every single day to deliver. That's what I'm focused on. That's what I'm excited about. And that's why we're going to go into this next election putting a very clear choice for Canadians. But we're still a year plus away from the election. I'm focused on making sure we're delivering through that election the kinds of things that Canadians need. That's what we're here for. Okay. Uh, the reality is uh, Canadians are focused every day on making sure that they can afford their rent, making sure they can afford groceries, making sure there are good jobs uh, for them, for their kids, making sure they have a good path towards retirement, making sure Canada remains strong and leading in the world in terms of economic growth, but also keeping people safe. These are the things that we are focused on. These are the things I'm going to continue to be focused on, and that's the work we're doing right here at this cabinet retreat to make sure that the programs we're putting forward, the way we're investing in Canadians, is right for the coming years and challenges. A lot of your ministers, a lot of Canadians were watching closely the American campaigns this summer. I assume you were too. Um, what lessons have you taken from watching what's happening south of the border in terms of your message about why you want to stick around for another four years? I think the, the, the big lesson is uh, in responding to the things that people are actually worried about. Responding with real solutions to the most pressing issues facing Canadians, whether it's uh, the inability to find affordable childcare spaces for young families that mean uh, that women, primarily, can't get back into the workforce when they want to and need to. 
responding to the pressure of everyday grocery prices with a school food program that's going to help 400,000 more kids across the country if provinces across the country step up to do their part and help deliver that program. Now, there's a number of provinces that are moving forward on it. There are others that are not, and that's why we're putting pressure on them right now, because as a teacher, as a dad, as a prime minister, I know how important it is to give kids the best start in life. As we move forward on securing jobs and careers for the future. We have real concrete solutions to put forward that we have been delivering over the past years that has led to one of the strongest economies in the world right now in Canada. The decision to be there to invest in Canadians has left Canada with one of the strongest economies in the world at a very difficult time. And we believe that using that strong economy to support Canadians in responsible ways is the best way to build the future. That's what we're focused on. We're not focused on culture wars, on complaining that everything is broken, that, you know, going off on strange tangents that, uh, quite frankly, Canadians are scratching their heads about. That's not the way to connect with Canadians. That's not the way to deliver what Canadians are asking for. So we're going to stay focused on the work that needs doing over the next year as we approach the next election to deliver for Canadians, to help people through, and to remind them why this is the very best country in the world. You're implicitly acknowledging you've had trouble delivering results over the nine years and getting things done out the door fast. So over how, the, how are you going to change that in the next year? Over the past nine years, we have delivered the strongest economy in the G7. The top place in the world for per capita foreign direct investment when you look at all the advanced economies of the G20. Companies around the world are investing in Canada because of the things that we've done. Whether it's uh, protection for the environment, whether it's support for families, whether it's training up the very best workers in the world. Canada has one of the strongest economies in the world and setting that economy to work for Canadian families, for Canadian seniors, for Canadian young people, is the choice we're making and we will continue to make. Now, Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives are making a different choice of throwing up in their hands saying the strongest economy in the G7 is broken. And what we have to do is cut programs to Canadians, kill the dental program that has helped half a million Canadians access dental care. Ignore the school food program. Stop investing in EVs and the jobs of the future. Stop fighting climate change. Well, that's exactly the opposite choices that what I heard from Canadians this summer. And that's why we're going to continue to step up and focus on delivering the things that matter for Canadians. Canada is a strong and smart country that knows where the future is going and Canadians are doing the work to get there and keeping that going is something that I know matters deeply to Canadians.